biblical story that is found in three of the four Gospels. It is found in Matthew chapter 9, Mark chapter 5, and also Luke chapter 8. In this story, we find a woman, a woman that has no name. She has no identity of her own, except being known by her plight. What happened to her seems to be what defines her. She is known as a woman with the issue of blood. She is said to have suffered a great deal with this issue, 12 years to be precise, and the story goes, after exhausting all possible avenues to get help, she reaches out to Jesus, believing that this is the man that will bring healing to her. And when Jesus comes into the picture, what everybody else could not do, Jesus could do. In Jesus, she finds healing. And this story becomes a great spiritual lesson of faith to us all. She is also known as a woman of losses. <coughs> she lost her health, being sick for so many years, her unhealthy state deprived her of so many things that she could have done with her life. She lost her identity. She went from being a woman with a name to just being known by her plight, a woman with an issue of blood. She lost a place in society. She was an outcast and she was considered unclean. She lost her purpose. She could not do certain things. Her existence was controlled by her sickness. She could not go to certain places as she was considered as unclean. And if she is there, she will make other people unclean too. She lost her resources. She spent all that she had to no avail. Instead, the Bible tells us she grew worse. She is known as a woman of determination and perseverance. The crowd she had to go through was not an ordinary crowd. They were pushing, they were pressing around Jesus. And when I look at the story, I keep wondering to myself, where did she get the strength to push through this large crowd? She was sick, she was getting worse in her illness. How did she manage to press through the crowd to get to Jesus? I'm picturing a crowd of healthy, strong people who most of them probably did not come for healing, but were just curious to see what is going to be happening next. And she was there, pushing them to get to Jesus. This kind of determination is very rare. Let us read together Mark chapter 5. We're reading from verse 21 right through to verse 28. Mark chapter 5, verse 21 and 28. I read, when Jesus had again crossed over by a boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and leave. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his cloak, I will be healed. This story we see, it is sandwiched between other stories of miracles that have been performed by Jesus. In the book of Matthew chapter 8 and 9, there is actually about nine of these miracle stories that we find there. And this one is part of this story, of his story. And just before this story, Jesus had just healed a demonic, a demon-possessed man. And for whatever reason, he is asked to please leave the region where he healed this man. And he left. He then crosses to the other side of the lake, and a large crowd has gathered around him. 
Then comes a man by the name of Jairus, and Jairus, seeing Jesus, fell at his feet and pleaded with Jesus, saying, My daughter is dying. Please come and lay your hands on her so that, so that she may be healed. And Jesus goes with him. In the process of Jesus answering Jairus' request, this woman in question today, who has an issue of blood, comes into the picture. She comes to Jesus believing that this is the man who would offer her the relief that she needed. Sometimes in our Christian journey, when Jesus answers somebody else's prayer, our prayers get answered. As this woman was pushing, getting closer to Jesus, the conditions seems to be a little bit unfavorable for her. Jesus was headed somewhere else. He already had an appointment, if we can put it in today's language. There was this big crowd, which was an obstacle of people pushing, pressing, and making it difficult for her to get to Jesus. But she was determined to beat the odds. She was determined to go to Jesus. She was desperate to get her healing. And physically, we are told her health was going down. The Bible says she suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. The more she consulted with many physicians, her situation grew worse. And financially, the story goes that her health was not only gone, but her wealth also was gone. This tells me that probably this woman had a sound financial background in her day, but spent all her money. It could have been all her savings. Probably he, she sold the properties, sold the valuables, but still no help. This must have increased her misery, her depression. She was poor and pitiful. Spiritually, to top it all, she was seen as unclean. This story is happening in a Jewish setting, which is driven by Leviticus laws. And according to Leviticus 15 verse 25, she was unclean and whoever touches her will be unclean too. She could not enter the temple, which means she could not participate in the worship service. She was alone, she was isolated, she was cut off from society. <coughs> Sometimes in life we have moments like these, of feeling alone in our suffering, of feeling isolated, of feeling cut off with no one, not knowing how to move forward. And it so happens that sometimes these are the times where the enemy touches us, whispers in our ears, giving us suggestions, ideas on how to take ourselves out of this misery, giving us something that seems to offer a pickup, something to give us a form of relief. And you know very well when these things happen that this is going to take you far away from what God desires for you. Tell your problems to Jesus. Our comfort, our consol consolation, our hope, our deliverance in times of distress is in Him and Amen. Amen. Let's read on chapter, uh, Mark chapter 5, and we read verse 29. It says, Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Mm. Jesus can turn my situation around. He can turn your situation around. Oh, yes. He can deliver us, free us from our suffering. We need to want him, go to him for help. He is ready to deliver us. Mark chapter 5, verse 30 to 32. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking. He kept looking around to see who had done it. Now, this question kind of was very strange to his disciples because we are told people were pushing against him and pressing against him. But here he is asking the question, who touched me? One preacher once said the way he was pressed and he was squeezed 
in the middle of this crowd. If you could lubricate around him, he would pop out. But still, he asked the question, who touched me? This was a different touch. Jesus realized that the power had gone out of him after someone had touched him. He kept looking. And in Mark chapter 5, verse 33, it says, Trembling with fear, she fell at Jesus' feet and declared with her mouth what had happened. There is nothing better to do for those that fear and tremble than to throw themselves at the feet of Jesus. Jesus wanted it to be known that it was faith that had brought about this healing. A complete faith in Jesus' power of healing. She had to be that example that others can follow. A faithful example. I don't know if there is a word like that. I'm not a first language English speaker, but all I'm trying to say is she was full of faith. <coughs> Mark chapter 5, verse 34 says, He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. This woman did not only find healing for her illness. Jesus said, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. She found healing. She got her identity back. She found peace. She found freedom. The woman moved from a no-name brand to being called the daughter of God. Amen. What an honor to be accepted by Jesus in the presence of a crowd, a crowd that had marginalized her, a crowd that had made her to feel unwanted, a crowd that rejected her. It was beyond and above what she had asked for. Jesus gives more than we ask for, only if we trust him. Psalms 23 verse 5 says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Jesus gives more than we can ask. We need to forget the noise from the crowd that is pushing and pressing. Look to Jesus. Focus on the table he has prepared and see the abundance of blessings that have been dished out for us. It is just blessing after blessing. You see, blood flow is a natural occurrence. It may be painful, uncomfortable, it makes you feel irritable, gives you mood swings, and just the maintenance of it becomes unbearable for any woman that knows what I'm talking about. But the thing is, it is there. It must come, it must be there. It signals that you are healthy and you have the ability to reproduce. Trials in our lives, though painful, unbearable, and difficult, they must come to make us strong, to strengthen our faith, so we can have a testimony of the goodness of the Lord at the end. Psalms 23 verse 4. <sighs> Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and stuff, they comfort me. Through trials, God will see us through. God will be our comfort. We need not to fear. In South Africa, in some cultures or in some communities, this occurrence of blood is awaited with longing. There are cultural celebrations around it. I come from a community of Kosas, Zulus, and Sutus. I'm from a region that borders the three provinces, the Eastern Cape, KwaZulu Natal, and Lesotho. Okay, maybe let me say two provinces and a country. Okay, Eastern Cape, KwaZulu Natal, and Lesotho. And growing up, I observed some ceremonies that were done in the villages that I come from. Well, as much as I did not experience this personally as I am an Adventist, but I witnessed community members, families coming together, 
making this, this very big, celebrating the fact that you are no longer a little girl, you are now a woman, a rite of passage to womanhood. The Kausas have a ceremony that they call Ubutoma, while the Zulus have a similar version of it called Umemudo. It's still being celebrated. It's not regarded as an ancient story. People still do it. And the Sutus have their own version of this celebration, which is called Libolo, Lamasad. You know, when they do the celebration, they really feel good about it. They really make it worthy, make it look like something has happened and we are celebrating and we are enjoying ourselves while doing this. And in our lives, when we have been through tough times and the victory has been won, and you are on the other side, safe, and God has walked you through the dark valley, celebrate. Declare the goodness of the Lord. Share your testimony. Sometimes your testimony can be the sermon that will encourage, inspire, and draw somebody closer to Jesus. Let's emerge on the other side stronger, no longer young girls, but grown-ups who have a story to tell, who are focused only on Jesus. When Jesus asked, who touched me? The woman fell at Jesus' feet, told the story, and declared the goodness of the Lord. It can only be by God's grace, his love and his care, and nothing else. You see, the issue of blood is a private thing. Very few people will know about it, except the one experiencing it. There are issues in our lives, issues in our lives that have wounded us. And individually, seated here, we might be bleeding inside. We are in pain, we are suffering. No one else sees it, sees it. Only we know about it. We are desperate, and in our desperation, we want to be healed. The great deliverer is Christ. The last part of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. With this promise, we can be assured that he is always there with us in our times of need. Even though Jesus was going to Jairus' house, when this woman came into the picture, Jesus gave his full attention. He zoomed in on her, listened to her story, and met her need. Jesus is never multitasking. You don't wait in a queue for your turn while he dishes out blessings to others. He has everyone's full attention. This woman fell at Jesus' feet and trembled with fear, told him the whole truth, the whole story. The fear might have been reverence or maybe she knew being unclean she can't be among people. I don't know. But I want to talk about fear and anxiety a little bit. Sometimes we are so afraid that this fear overwhelms us. It disrupts us. It hinders us to reach our full potential. It cripples us, crashes our spirit, weakens our will, steals our joy, and renders us powerless in the battle with the enemy. Let us take heart. We have a Jesus bigger than our fears, larger than our worries, Amen. who reaches out and comforts us and brings that reassuring warmth and satisfaction in our, in our hearts, no matter what situation we are going through. When this woman fell at Jesus' feet in fear and she trembled, Jesus offered most kind and calming words. He says, daughter, go in peace. Let us not be afraid of what will come, as trials are there to strengthen our faith. When Jesus, with Jesus, fear will not dominate and cripple us, but we will be strengthened that no matter what happens, we will not fear. Let's live by faith.
As I conclude, I pray today that our personal encounter with Jesus may be a touch that will never leave us the same. Amid the storms of life, let us know his eyes are upon us. When distress and anguish is before us, let us, let us reach out to Jesus to increase our faith. Give us faith that can endure, a faith that will withstand those severely tried. Steps to Christ, page 100, under the topic, The Privilege of Prayer. Ellen White says, Keep your wants, your joys, your sorrows, your cares, and your fears before God. You cannot burden Him. You cannot weary Him. Take to Him everything that perplexes the mind. Nothing is too great for Him to bear, for He holds up the worlds. Nothing Nothing that in any way concerns our peace is too small for him to notice. There is no perplexity too difficult for him to unravel. James 5 verse 11 says, The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. You know, when we touch the hem of Jesus' garment in faith, the healing we need is assured. God says to you, daughter, your faith has made you whole. Be in peace. I pray that this story may linger a little longer in our hearts, empowering us, encouraging us, and inspiring us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.